Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, the advent of the Savior Messiah. I want us to take the year 1809 as an example. The international scene was tumultuous and violent. Napoleon was sweeping through Austria. Blood flowed freely. Nobody then cared about babies. But the world was overlooking some terrifyingly significant birds. For example, William Gladstone was born that year. He was destined to become one of England's finest statesmen. That same year, Alfred Tennyson was born to an obscure minister and his wife. The child would be one day greatly affect the literary world in a marked manner. On the American continent, Oliver Wendell Holmes was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and not far away in the city of Boston, Edgar Allan Poe, the American writer, poet, editor, and literary critic began his eventful and tragic life. It was also in that same year that a doctor named Darwin and his wife named their son Charles Robert Darwin. In that same year came the cries of a newborn baby in a rough log cabin in Hardin County, Kentucky. The baby's name? Abraham Lincoln. If there had been news broadcast at that time, I am sure these words would have been heard. The fate of the world is being forged today on an Austrian battlefield. But history was actually being made in the cradles of England and America. Similarly, everyone thought that the unjustified taxes of the Roman Empire were the big news in the lands of Palestine when Jesus was born. But a young Jewish virgin cradled the greatest news of all times, the birth of the Savior of the world. We are already entered the month and the season where as Christians we remember the birth of the Savior of the world. In the reflection for this day, we will talk about the Advent, the promise, the most important and significant birth that has ever occurred in the history of mankind. For this, we read in the Old Testament written in the 6th century before Christ. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephratha, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel whose origins are in the distant past will come from you on my behalf. Micah chapter 5 verse 2 I want to make a clarification concerning the day of his birth. We have to say the things how they are. It is not established anywhere in the Holy Scriptures. The Bible is silent on this subject. We can only decipher the approximate time of his birth, but the day is not mentioned at all. After the Roman Church formally established Christmas on December 25th of the year 336 AD, during the reign of Emperor Constantine, the Christian Church began to celebrate this date either by influence or by tradition. We can agree on one thing and that is that it doesn't matter 
what exact day our Lord Jesus was born. His church today celebrates with joy the fulfillment of that prophecy, the advent, the birth of our redeeming Messiah. Why, would you ask? It is simple, because if his birth had not existed, there would be no salvation either. If Jesus had not been born, he would not have given his life for yours and mine either. The Christian world has established a day to remember one of the most important events in the universal history of humanity. And I say one because the second most significant event for humanity occurred 2,000 years ago in the city of Jerusalem when the Lord Jesus was tortured, died, was buried, and was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And the third and last great event is the one that you and I look forward to, the triumphant return to this earth of Jesus Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, event that will fulfill God's promise of eternal life for all those who today love Him and hope in His promise. What today is announced each year as the Advent? But what does Advent mean? Means coming or arrival, the anticipated arrival of Christ into the world in bodily form. With that first Advent of the Messiah, it became clear that God's rescue operation for human beings in the world has decisively begun, but was not yet complete. Jesus truly launched the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. In his birth, his public career, his death, and his resurrection. But it is clear that because of the kind of thing the kingdom was, it would then have to make its way through the humble and self-sacrificing service of Jesus' followers. Until the time when Jesus will return to finish the work, to set all things in the right order, to banish evil and death forever, to put an end to the kingdom of darkness and to fully unite heaven and earth once and for all under the divine supremacy of God the Father and Jesus Christ His Son. The birth of Christ had already been announced by the prophet Isaiah more than 700 years before the birth of Christ and long before the prophet Micah that we read about previously. In the writings of the prophet Isaiah, we read, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Book of Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 to 7. After the fall of man in Eden, God established a pact with the patriarch Abraham, then with Isaac and Jacob, and with Moses after the departure of the liberated people of Israel from Egypt. A pact of animal sacrifice to cleanse and forgive the sins of his people. It was necessary that each year a lamb be offered as a sacrifice to cleanse and forgive their sins. After the opportunity given to God's chosen people by the promise given to Abraham, also through his prophets, he promised to send a savior for the rest of humanity. The prophecies about the birth of Christ are very clear in the Old Testament. Could you really doubt that God has done everything possible to reach and change the rebellious heart of man? In another chapter of Isaiah's prophetic writings, he tells us that Emmanuel, God with us, would be born of a young virgin. In chapter 7, the prophet wrote, All write them, 
the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. That was a reality that materialized for the world at that time. The Son of God was born of a virgin woman and walked among the inhabitants of the world at that time, and many were unaware of His presence. I want to remind you that the Gentile world, that is, you and I, and the rest of the inhabitants of this planet were not part of that first pact. We had nothing to do with that promise, and we wander without God in this world full of evil. God, in His immense love, mercy, and justice, at the right time sent His Son Jesus to be born in the midst of this world to open that opportunity for us. For this reason, the Apostle Paul in the letter to the Ephesians wrote, Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathen by the Jewish who were proud of their circumcision even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from the citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to Him through the blood of Christ. For Christ Himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people, when in His own body on the cross He broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in Himself one new people from the two groups. Together, as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of His death on the cross, and our hostility towards each other was put to death. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 16. Surely you will wonder, why did He have to be born in human form? Because to save humanity from the domains of darkness, death, and sin, a unique and eternal sacrifice was necessary. The death of lambs was a temporary solution in the Old Testament covenant. The sacrifice of a perfect lamb was required, without blemish and without sin. The only one who could meet these requirements to cleanse men from sin and death was the Son of God the only being in the universe with the necessary qualities. He is the only one who is 100% human and 100% divine. Now we can understand more clearly the most important passage in the Holy Scriptures. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life to provide an effective sacrifice for the sin of the world. Without the Incarnation, we would have no Savior. The Old Testament covenant tells us that sin required death for its payment. God is a spirit and cannot die, so the Savior had to be incarnated to be able to die and offer His life to atone for the sins of mankind. This new covenant is fulfilled with the promise of a Savior, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of humanity. Glory be to Christ the King. My dear friend and brother, this Christmas, let us allow our Savior Jesus Christ to be born in the humble manger of our hearts. Let's not stop to discuss about the day. Let us receive it with joy and full of gratitude, that incomparable gift from God. May He fill our being with His presence and give us purpose to live and serve Him wholeheartedly. 
That is the greatest gift ever received by this lost world. Dear Lord of all mercy, in a time when all hearts should be light and joyful, there are many who are struggling with the heaviness of life, with burdens that steal joy and tranquility. We need your peace, Lord. In a world where worry prevails and not peace, reawaken in us the good news that the birth of your Son Jesus brings us. We offer you the manger of our heart as a dwelling. We ask and anticipate it covered by the immaculate and sinless blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. <music>